Well, welcome, welcome. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless you all. Happy Wednesday, July the 6th. I had to look at the calendar. All right. But we are honored to have you all with us. Thank you for tuning in. Um, we are grateful to the Lord for, to be amongst you all. We don't take it lightly. We are honored, honored, honored. Thank you, thank you, thank you um, for sharing this time with us. If you have not signed up for the newsletter, you can do so to follow us and um, keep up, all right? I love to say that because we're always on the move. Um, we do have the anointing oil on the website for $10. And we also have handkerchiefs that we will send out if you are believing God for healing in your body. Um, I, I, I see someone with something mental going on. And so if you listen to this and you would like a handkerchief, please reach out to the ministry and we will send that out to you. Amen. With specific instructions, glory to God, um, as the Lord gives them to us for you. All right. Uh, let's talk about lofty ground um, briefly. Lofty ground is the kingdom advancing ministries. We want to make sure that we are bridging the gap between the church and the uh, community. And so Lofty Ground, it works in conjunction with the ministry. It's the nonprofit that is geared towards African-American males, all right? <clears throat> we do know that there are disparities in all ethnicities, but we are dealing with African-American males, all right? Males, excuse me. And so Lofty Ground, we have FDIC. We partnered, excuse me, with FDIC and with Grow With Google to offer free courses. We are grateful for that. We will continue to keep going, um, make, you know, making, building this um, educational center. Now those courses are for adults. Let me be very clear, all right? And then, um, Stream, okay, our stream program. Oh, don't worry about that. Just keep the stream program. Um, we have that. We this is our second year for the stream program. It's science, technology, reading, engineering, art, and math. All right. And this is an area where we know that African American children lag in those areas, all right? And so we want to make sure that they have an advantage. And so we've created a stream program. And we do that in the month of June. Um, it's a full program and we will have video footage coming out of that very, very soon. We're very excited. We doubled the program from last year, all right? Um, as far as our fire and glory prophetic encounter that's coming up, um, listen, if you, you wanna be there, okay? Because there's certain moments in God, the church is in revival at this time. And this is the time of fire and glory. And so, Fire, let me just explain a little bit. Uh, Pastor B shared this with me today. And fire consumes, fire burns, and it purifies. And so the Lord is purifying his church and he's purifying his people, all right? And there are moments in time, there are encounters with God that you wanna make sure that you're, not, you're in on. And I always say this, you all hear me say, you wanna follow the glory, amen? You wanna follow the glory cloud. You don't wanna miss God. Um, as Pastor V was even saying, as we were um, pray, doing praise and worship, you don't wanna miss God, all right? And there are moments in time, there will be some um, prophetic impartation and, and activation that takes place there. So we are very excited. We have a full day. And I was talking to somebody, I was like, man, I, I'm glad it's only one day. Y'all know how our stuff is, even on, on lives, okay? It's, it's, it's like that. I mean, it's lit. The, the presence of the Lord is here, right? And so we're grateful for that. And so October the 15th, you don't want to admit, I'm telling you, if you feel like you need to be... Um, launched into your destiny. God is calling some of you deeper, um, women of God. And so please just consider being that um, the last day. Thank you so much for asking that. The last day to purchase the tickets will be September the 30th. How many days September 30th? Right, y'all? Help me out. 30 days, September 30th. However, if you are going to be staying at the, whole, at the Renaissance, the September the 29th is the last day to reserve your room, all right, before they release the rooms. So thank you for asking that, Taylor. Um, and so um, we, listen, you want to be there, amen? You want to be there. You want to be there, 
Glory to God. You want to be there. And so um, I am very grateful to the Lord concerning this. Um, this is something that the Lord has given us. And we are going to be having, a, if you're traveling with your spouse, we're going to be having dinner with the, I'm talking about ourselves in third person. You're going to be having dinner with us afterwards. All right. <laughs> Um, we we are going to be having dinner with couples afterwards, and we just we're just grateful to be able to you know spend time with couples mm -hmm. after we have probably been laid out in the floor, won't he do it, and all that good stuff, and the fire is falling. And, and, and this, and this, <laughs> there will, it won't it won't be. It's not a second service. No, it's just an opportunity for yeah. us to get together, mm -hmm. to fellowship one toward to one with another, mm -hmm. and share with each other. Listen, mm -hmm. we're there to hear from you guys just as much as you guys may want to hear us say something. We want to hear y'all say something too. So, be yeah, yes, yeah, and just fellowship. And we, we just want to hang out and talk just to y'all and shake hands with you, not get too close. I know some people may still be a little, and we will, we, we, <laughs> we will represent and we're gonna distance and we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna, we're gonna break, we're gonna share part and be a part responsibly, yeah. But we're gonna have, we want to have a good time as yeah, well. Man, we do. We and do. so it's yeah, nothing like absolutely, absolutely, fellowship. absolutely, nothing like it. And so again, thank you guys, Tony. Thank you for coming on last night, Tony. I appreciate you, my brother. Mm -hmm. That meant a lot to me to see you and to hear your voice. God wants mm -hmm. to hear more from you because mm -hmm. you got a lot to say, and I appreciate that, man. Yep. And your voice was definitely needed in this time. Mm -hmm. And so let me pray, and then we'll get right into it. Oh, With dear yeah. heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, Father, for this day, Father. This is the day that you have made, God that we choose to rejoice and be glad in it, God. Thank you for the word of God that will be shared on tonight, Father. Hallelujah. Speak to us, God, on tonight, God, that we, that I step back, Father, that you step forward, God. Hallelujah. Get glory on tonight, Father. Hallelujah. Be glorified in everything that we say and do and let your word be made simple on tonight. Hallelujah. That we may be able to live and respond to your word, Father. We glorify and we love you, God, and we give your name praise. It's in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And let the, 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 the spirits, the gifts of the spirit be in full manifestation, mm -hmm. God, on this evening, God. So Heal, God. deliver, prophesy, God. God. Do what you want to do on tonight, God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Not just through us, but through the listeners, Father. Mm -hmm. That they not just be hearers of the word, but they be doers as well, as well, Father. So thank you for each and every one of them. It's in the precious name of Jesus we glorify you. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, good evening once again, everyone. Hallelujah. How many of you guys had an awesome, awesome time? Who was with us on Sunday? And that you guys was with us last Bible study. We had an awesome, awesome time, yes, didn't we? Yes, we did, sweetheart. And so, listen, wanted to pick up God. I wanted me to pick back up on something that we were talking about. And we're going to get back into this. Uh, we talked about, the last time we were together, we talked about unforgiveness, the prison of unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. So now I want to, he wanted me to share with, um, not just part two, but this on tonight, even in that, he wanted, he, he was impressing upon me that his, that he wanted to, um, he wanted to encourage you. He's given me the power to let it go. Amen. He's giving you guys the power to let it go. Because some of us may receive um, forgiveness because of, of, our, of our willingness to, we lived in unforgiveness, but now we have to have, now he wanted me to share with you that you have the power to let it go. You don't have to carry it no more. Hallelujah. That it wasn't yours to carry anyway. We picked up things that we wasn't supposed to carry and we took it on personally and that that they, that made our load even heavier. So on tonight, we want to lighten your load on the day. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to lighten your load because listen, Thank you, Jesus. as we go through this life, life itself has a way of, of weighing us down with things. Mm -hmm. Life concerns, life issues, because we all face them. Truth be told, Amen. Mm -hmm. We all have things that we are going through. Amen. That we have, that we that we battle through, that our faith fights through, mm -hmm. because we are in faith fights. That we fight the good fight of faith, but we are fighting. Amen. And so we have to make sure that we know that we don't have to carry the burdens of unforgiveness. He's given us the power to forgive. So let's, let's just go ahead and because um, the, the time and everything, let's get right into it. Turn your Bibles to um, Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to start at verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. 
And if you ever lose them descriptions, we have them in the notes so you can write them down if you need to and go back and review and read them. Hebrews chapter 12, verse one, it says, as for us, we all have these great witnesses who encircle us, those individuals who've gone before us. We are, we are, and, and, one, and one, one, yeah, one translation scripture, we are, we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses. Us like cloud, um, it says, us like clouds. Is this, so we must let go of every wound, let it go. We must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Now, let me stop here for a second. How many of us know that sin is so easy to fall into? When you're not, when you're not built with the right thing, when you're not, when you're not, when you're not grounded in the right thing, it's easy to fall into the wrong thing. Amen. Amen. And how many of us know we can bear witness to that, that when we was not, when we wasn't grounded in the word of God, as we should, we fail to things that we, that we know we shouldn't have fallen for. I used to have, we used to have an apostle years ago that used to tell us that if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Apostle Ralphie Green. Apostle Ralphie Green. And I've, I've found that to be true, that if you don't become, if that doesn't become a standard of righteousness and holiness in your life, then we fall for any and everything. Mm -hmm. We fall for people, men and women that we know we have no business being with, we fall for them. When we know that what they what they what they possess inside of them has bears no fruit to what the tree that I'm that I'm that, that's being sprouted in me. Right. So I'm fighting, I'm fighting the losing battle with that. I'm trying to fit a round peg into a square hole. And so we want to talk, let's talk, let's talk tonight. And it says, then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion determination for the path has already been marked out before us see our path has already been marked out before us y'all so even though we need to let we need to learn and let things go we know that we win but we want to we want to make the we want to make our marathon lighter by letting the things go you can't run a race carrying a bunch of baggage with you Y'all see, y'all see where they're running track. They have on the lightest clothes possible. Why? Because I can't run with running a uh, running against the current and things pulling me back. And that's our lives. When we choose not to walk in forgiveness, we're running a race with things that that's designed to hold us back. But we we haven't let it go, so we can be free to run this race. Because listen, we all have a race to run. And even though we win at the end, we want to make sure that when we're running, we, that, that race, that, our race becomes lighter, which means our stride becomes stronger. Amen. And then as, you begin, as you're getting stronger, it gets faster. Endurance. Absolutely. I don't know about you. I never ran track. I used to play football, but I know about running. And I know that it's hard to run when you got a whole bunch of stuff on you. It, when you when you when you start, when you take that stuff off, you feel lighter. The same with life's issues, life concerns, life troubles, life's problems, whatever you want to add, whatever you want to add to that or make you feel lighter the moment you learn to let it go. And that's, that's, that's God's word for us on tonight. For someone on tonight, I say for all of us, we got to let things go. Why? Because some of the things that we're carrying is designed to kill us. Mm -hmm. And we will talk about that. Let's get, we'll get into it. Then we'll keep going. Go to, we're there, we're there at verse 2. It says, for we look away from the natural realm and we focus our attention and expectation unto Jesus who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward unto face perfection. His example is this, because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing 
that you would be his, he endured agony on the cross. Conquering it illustrates and, and, and how sit and how he sits and exalted at the right hand of the Father on the throne of God. Amen. So we know and we're seeing this all that he didn't he didn't do all of that so we can let it go. So when we see this here, we know that we don't have to bear any burden because he already bore the burden for us. So why carry it, y'all? I'm giving y'all a virtual altar on tonight. If y'all, I know some of y'all home and y'all got y'all, get a pen and a piece of paper, whatever that thing is, and, and toss it to the screen. When, and that's your, that's a sign of throwing whatever's holding you back and whatever's weighing you down, you're laying it on the altar of God on tonight. Yeah. And see, that's an act of faith because I know so I hear some of y'all out there maybe saying, man, that's kind of crazy. Why are we going to gonna write something <laughs> on a piece of paper? We're not even there. And now we're going to throw it towards the screen. It's Listen, the it's the act of your faith yes, Lord. <laughs> that moves the hand of God. Because this, he responds to your faith. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And so, listen, when you carry what you when you carry what you don't have to carry, write that down and then throw that on the altar and let it say, God, I surrender all to you. Yeah. I give it to you. Mm -hmm. I'm not built to carry it. Go ahead. You had something. I just hear God saying, this is personal. This is personal. And that's why he's having you all to write it on the paper and ball it up and throw it toward the screen yeah. because it's personal. Yeah, yes. And that's how God deals with us with the with the real with those raw issues because this is a raw issue whatever it was that you're letting go. And so the Lord is saying this is why I have pastor be doing this because it needs to be done. You need to you need, and when you throw it you're releasing it. So there, there is this altar here where you're releasing that thing, right? Because you're saying, I'm not carrying it. Yes, Lord, I'm not carrying it anymore. And when you release it, it's an act of your faith to say, I am no longer carrying it. I give it over and I cast it to, on the altar. Yeah, yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, you and listen, if you're not bold enough to do it, then you can't be bold. Then you're not you're not bold enough to receive it. Yes, Lord. You gotta, you gotta do it. Mm-hmm. And I listen. Lord. We all have been carrying something that we know that we got to let it go. Listen, 1 Peter 5 and 7, it says that we to cast all our anxieties on him. Let me read it out, this, trans, this translation. It says, pour out all your worries and your stress upon him mm-hmm. and leave it there. Mm-hmm. For he always tenderly cares for you. How many of us, how many of us all when we when we hear that, how many of us actually leave what we're going through with God instead of running back at some point and picking it back up again? Because most of us do. We talk about it, but but then we go back and we pick that thing back up again. Why? Because most of us like a pity pie. Most of us like the woe is me when people when people see you and you want people to when people come around you. Oh, what's going on, baby? You everything all right? And then we give them the cliche. God is good. Everything's going to be all right. Is it really because have we given it to him to make it all right? Because see, listen, we have a part to play in our all right. Our all right don't just happen. We have a part to play. We have to, it's telling us, we have to give it over to him, casting our cares. That means we have to give it to him. Y'all know, y'all, y'all seen people fish if you haven't fished already. You know, when you got that reel, you got to throw that thing out there. We got to cast that out there. And when we're doing that, we're pushing it far away from us. Because God cares for us. He does. Pour out all your worries and your stress. How many are stressing? Mm-hmm. One, one translation, one, 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 one verse of scripture says, what what can you add to your um your life by worry? What do you add to your life by worry? You can't add nothing to your life by worry. Look at that translation. Look at that description. What, 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 that's that's um that's something different. But yeah, so um, 
Man, that's, that's, we got to learn to let that thing go, y'all. Whatever that thing is. And only you and God know what that thing is. You got to let it go. Because listen, it starts out real small. And then your, your willingness to carry it around with you gets, it gets heavier, it gets bigger, it gets stronger. And now it starts, be, now, now it's a part of you because you can't go without it and it can't go without you. And it also creates a hardness of heart because he's talking about unforgiveness. Absolutely. And so when your heart becomes hard, it's hard to, well, <laughs> I don't want to use the word twice, but it is, you, you, you don't want to receive anything. You're in a very disgruntled place because your heart is hard, right? And so that's why even when the Lord says, harden not your heart the day you hear my voice, because he, he, when your heart becomes hard, it's like a wall. It's like a brick wall. So nothing can get in and nothing's coming out either. If I create a brick wall, you're not only stopping something from coming in, but nothing's going out. And that's a really, that's a hard place. That's a, that is a, a place of disparity. Mm -hmm. It's a place of grief. It is a place of, um, um, I see a valley. It's literally like the valley of dry bones. No one is designed to walk through a valley the, all of the days of their life. And when you, when you're in that situation and your heart is hard, nothing is God's love. It's like, he's, he's, it's like this. You're coming. Have you all, well, I would never run into a brick wall, but you know, you've seen it on the cartoons. Let me go there. Right. You're going to run smack and pet. You're going to, you, nothing's going to penetrate that. Amen. And so I just pray that the walls, listen, of your heart, the walls that you put around your heart, that they fall, God give you a heart of flesh. Hallelujah. It's okay if you, even someone's going to come back and you've been very wounded. Listen, you've been very wounded. It's not that you have not been wounded. We're saying, give it to the Lord yeah. to cast that care to the Lord. Yeah. Because listen, to be in a, to be an effective believer, mm -hmm. we have to be willing to know that we, okay, yeah, we've gone through some things. Life has happened, but so many people are ineffective in this life because they have walked, they're walking around in bitterness, yeah. unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. And let's strike, and they really don't trust God to give it to him, knowing that everything listen, Matthew 6 and 27 tells us that can any one of you by worrying at a single hour to your life? Wow. Can you add anything to your life? It's telling us, can you add a, a, look, a single hour to your life? One hour to your life by worry. Something that you've been carrying all of your life. You, one single hour of your life. I'm telling you, listen, we got to let it go, y'all. And I'm, we here, I'm here on tonight, and we're here on tonight to beseech you and to act. Listen, before God, you let it go. He hurt you, so what? And that's not being cold. Right. It's over with. Right. He gone. Bubba gone. He ain't coming back unless you want him back, knowing all the baggage that Bubba bringing back with him. You don't want Bubba back. Tell Bubba come get his drawers and he got to go. <laughs> Susie Q too. If Susie, if Susie Q's around, tell Susie Q come get a bra and she got to go. Because the, the, this stuff is designed to keep you in bondage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She hurt me. Okay, she gone. She on. She moved on to the next guy. Mm -hmm. Let her go. The job, I was, you, I, I was qualified. I interviewed right. Mm -hmm. I had my best outfit on. <laughs> I, look, I gave it to him. I was, look, I was, I came in that joint. In y'all terms, <laughs> I came in that joint lit. Everything was right. The lips was popping. The eyelashes was on fleek. Oh gosh! <laughs> the hair, the hair was laid down. 
<laughs> the whole the baby, I had, I had, baby the, head, the, baby I had the outfit working. I had the baby oil all on my arm. <laughs> Like cleavage showing, I Ooh. was giving it to him. Yeah, I know some people do that now. And you and you still didn't get the job. Well, huh? Huh? Now you feeling some kind of way? Ooh. Now, <laughs> now you now you said, let's we 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 got all dolled that we did all, and even let's and I'm gonna take it off the women, even the men. They went in there with what? We I don't wear a suit, but I have my nice button up on. Mm. I have my dress just right. They were clean. Yeah. Okay. I had I had everything working. I had everything where I had my smell good on. I had it had to working. Your car? I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and and listen, oh. and here's where people, and here's where people outside of all the superficial in terms of right. the, the dress and everything, right. here's where people get off. I believe God told me that was my job. And they didn't hire you. Mm. And now we're mad. Mm. We're hoping. We're, we're, we're frustrated with God. Mm. And was it God who said it? Or was it you who said God said it? And here's the thing. Maybe just maybe he wanted to see if you would go and do what he told you to do about applying for that job. Because he, here's where it is. Because see, maybe that job, you, you, knew, you knew it was way out of your league anyway. Or maybe it was under your league. You dumbed yourself down. See, God is God is pushing us now, y'all. He's pushing us. And sometimes we get, we, things don't happen the way we want to happen. So now we get, we lose, we lose heart in those things. And now we're upset. Mm. Well, maybe he just wanted you to go back. Yeah, that, and that's, and that's, that's the end all be all. He wanted to see if you would move. Mm. Mm -mm. So letting that God, letting that job go and let the thought of that job go. Now you open yourself up now. Okay, God, I'm ready to receive what you have for me. Because now you know that I'll go. I'll do what you said do, no matter what it costs me, no matter how it may look mm -hmm. physically or people may view me physically. I'm not embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed. Because see, all those things go into your bag and try to weigh you down. Shame, embarrassment, guilt, making you feel people may say, man, you did all that for what? That's why you got sometimes it's best that we got to cut off the noise when we are obeying God. We just got to go and do what God told us to do, y'all. We just got to go, we got to be willing to do it. I know, listen, I know I, I jumped out there all the time. When God told me to do something, mm -hmm. I I well that's a lie. I didn't do it all the time. I okay. I was in I was in disobedience a lot of times. But I know for I know <clears throat> that some of the things he he, he asked me he did well, he didn't ask me tell he told me to do it, and I did it. And it, and the results didn't turn out the way that I thought at the time. But they end up working out for my good anyway. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he knew he can trust me. Mm -hmm. Just not every job, but a lot of jobs that I, I've, I've had, I was underqualified for. And he had me go on the interviews to see if I would walk out on faith and trust him. And for me, I thought, man, I'm going to look like a fool. I ain't got no minutes applying for this job. When I got there, they looked at me like I was a fool. But when they finish, they, they, they end up trying to offer me other jobs outside of the one that I applied for because they knew they had to have me somewhere within that company. Tell y'all a story, true story, true story, true story, true story. Y'all know, know the National Harbor, right? If y'all live in the D.C. area, and even if y'all visit it, y'all see that big old Ferris wheel down there, right? That's some... 
some pilot engineering stuff that people who operate that have to operate that. Y'all know that, right? There's a thousand buttons in there that operate the lights and all this stuff in there. And you, you, you literally, you go through a couple of weeks of training to do that. So I can attest to this. I, I knew someone who worked with the, with the management company down there at the time. They asked me to apply for a position that was outside of that. Working with, in a property management area. I went down suited and booted, y'all. Buttoned up. And I told myself I was going to get that job. Didn't get that job. <laughs> but before I left the job, the guy offered me, a, and he offered me a job working the Ferris wheel. Now, they pay, it, was, it was paying pretty good. He was willing to do all, he put me through all the training and everything <laughs> and had me, had me working the Ferris wheel. Good money. She tell you it's good, it's good, good, good money to operate that. I told that guy, no way, no how. Why did I tell him that? I don't know nothing about working no Ferris wheel. Don't want to learn how to work no Ferris wheel. Don't want the responsibility of all those lives of the people who are on that Ferris wheel. I told y'all that story for one reason and one reason only, that when one door closes, he opens up another one. So why get frustrated and why be, why be bitter about a door that closed? Because if that door was closed, it wasn't supposed to be open anyway. And so I had to learn, and I'm learning that I had to let the thing to go because I, I, I could have been mad. I, I wanted to be mad with the, the individual who told me about the job. Then you set me up. You knew he wasn't going to hire me. It looked like he wasn't going to hire me, but you knew that the, the job was for the first wheel. Why you didn't tell me the job was for the first wheel anyway? See, all these thoughts was going through my mind, walking out with my suit on, I took my towel. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that, oh, it, when I stopped and I got in the car and I realized, I said, God, there was a blessing in that anyway. Because they saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. He had more, he had more confidence in my ability to work the first wheel than I did. And so when we, when we realize that God is setting us up all the time for his glory, we just got to step out of the way. Go ahead. No, when he, when um, Pastor V would just mm -hmm. gave that illustration, all I heard God say was, I see more in you than you see in yourself. Oh, for sure. And so the unforgiveness, when you, when he sees beyond the unforgiveness, Absolutely. he's seeing, the but you have to see beyond the unforgiveness. Yeah, he sees the blessing. He sees it in you. Yeah, but do sure. you see, do you see it in yourself? Yeah, he sees the blessing. And that's why he's chiseling away, yes, Lord, on tonight at that hardness of the heart because he does see beyond the unforgiveness. Yeah. And he wants you to see beyond the unforgiveness. He wants you to see how much, how much freedom there is on the other side. Yeah. Because he wants you free. Yes. He wants you blessed. Yes. He wants you walking yes. in total victory in every area of your mm -hmm. lives. And he knows that the only thing that's keeping you from experiencing that is your willingness to not let it go. Come on. Listen, I, I hear y'all out there. Some of y'all out there giving me amens. Come on, y'all got to do, y'all better give y'all better than that. Because this, he wants you free, y'all. This world is, we got, why the movie, the zombie, or the, 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 the zombie apocalypse, all these movies are so popular because we people are walking around the walking dead. Because they don't know, have a full understanding of who they are in the power of, and in the life of God concerning their lives. They have no understanding. Listen, man, it's, oh, it's, it's, such, a, it's such a travesty when you see, because we all know people who have so much potential in them, but because they can't utilize it and visualize it for themselves because they don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. We as human beings, we only use a fraction of what God has placed in us mm -hmm. because we're afraid to be different. We, God calls us peculiar. Oh, for sure he does. He said we're peculiar. For sure we are. No question we are. Mm -hmm. No question we are. Listen, and listen, and once we get a real understanding of the word of God, y'all know my one of my favorite scriptures is 
thy word, God's word is truth, right? Mm -hmm. John 17, 17, it tells us, then you will know the truth and the truth of God's word. And that truth will set you free. You can only be set free by the truth of God's word. The Bible tells us here that the, thy word is true. Once we tap into God's word being true in our life, in every area of our lives, that doesn't exclude any area of our lives. I heard a guy on, a, on TV last night, one, a, a minister, he was saying that God doesn't want you healed. That's a lie. He wouldn't have put it in his word if he didn't want you healed. Why did he come? Because, but see, there's so many people that we talked, we talked about that last night, the Monday night movie. There's so much distortion of what God's word is because it's designed to get the people of God to not believe the whole Bible concerning the word of God mm -hmm. and concerning our lives. Listen, we got, if there's freedom, y'all, in truth. And once you, once you believe that the freedom of truth is there, you can forgive and be forgiven of any and everything. Mm -hmm. How do you correlate the two, Pastor V? Because if I trust and I believe God to know that his word will never fail me, I know that he said, he told me that he, want, that he wants to heal me mm -hmm. of all my wounds. Yeah. That's my, not just my physical, right, but those, right, are my, right. those are my spiritual wounds mm -hmm. as well as my emotional wounds, my wounds. Everything that concerns me, he wants to heal. And that's why I laid out the I laid out the illustrations about those things. The, the boys, the boyfriend walking away, or the hug, what whoever walked out of your life, baby daddy, baby mama, job didn't come through. Whatever things that I right, man, listen, we had a car and we lost the car. How many cars have you gained since that? How many cars will you gain since that? Those things are true. Mm -hmm. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Mm -hmm. And man, listen, I had to, I and I had to forgive myself because there's nothing worse than than than, uh, than, than us taking on that embarrassment. You know, embarrassment for us, embarrassment for people is a, is a dangerous thing to own it because you can't be embarrassed if you choose not to be embarrassed. It just is what it is. And that's, and, that, and that's what I've taken on. I People are always like, Burge, that didn't make you feel the kind of way? Nah, for what? I'm human. Right. I make mistakes. I'm not embarrassed by, I'm not embarrassed by choices that I made. I wish I wouldn't have made them, but they don't hold them. They don't hold me in bondage. I've learned to cast my cares over to God about that, those things. Now I, I listen. I, I don't make it no. I don't make it no habit to go around doing dumb things. But what? But but when you make a when you make a, a a decision or a choice that doesn't bode well for who you say you are or things that you know that you um you lay claim to in terms of your what you believe in terms of the word of God, you get up and you keep going. You don't stay in condemnation about choices that you made. See, that, those things are that that stuff is designed to keep us in bondage. Mm -hmm. And I hope y'all hear me on tonight that we got to get past it. I know, man, I know, I, I know. Y'all, I tell y'all, we talk about all the time. I talk about me because I know me. I don't know nothing about y'all. I see y'all, but don't know y'all. I had to get over people talking and calling me stupid. And I, and I give my testimony. Because I overcome by my testimony. My, my testimony, test, see, listen, that's why the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Why is that, Pastor B? Because people are held bondage by their past and they're not free enough to share their past. And so the, the shame of it keeps people in bondage in the stronghold. Listen, I struggle with reading, y'all. When I was growing up. I struggled with reading. I had two major concussions playing youth football at six years old. No kid should have their helmet cracked at six years old playing football. I had my crack. My brain swole. I had, a, I had swelling on my brain. And I used to, I went to sleep from six, age six to age 18, crying myself to sleep every night. 
taking BCs. Who remember BC, the BC powder? There was no ibuprofen. There was no Tylenol 800 back then. <laughs> you had to put it in your mouth and then had something to wash it down with. That's right. And wash it down quickly. <laughs> or oh, that should be told with things that did you tell me stick it to your mouth. Like you had a whole mouth full of powder. But anyway, I cried myself to sleep every night. And I struggled with reading vision blurry. They didn't have what they have now, the test for that stuff. But thanks be to God, the day I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, my headaches went away. I haven't struggled with a headache since, thank God. And I'm in my 50s now. But I struggle with reading, y'all. And I, I and she know, even, even, to, even back to a couple of years ago, that the condemnation of things tried to get me so bad. I went to a reading specialist to see if I had an issue with being dyslexic. She told me there was nothing wrong with me. They made me read and everything. She said, there's nothing wrong with you. You just need to read more. <laughs> but see how condemnation does? It holds you in bondage. Because I couldn't, I couldn't let it go. I, I knew that something had to be wrong with me because people told me something was wrong with me. So I held on to a stigma that I was illiterate. I was, I call, I was, the, I, I said I was in the functioning illiterate. I took that on for years because that's what was told to me, or that's what was scuttled butted around. And I hope I'm freeing somebody out there. Amen. But I had to let that go and realize, listen, I am not what they said I am. Not because there's faith and that because my faith and stupidity lined up, because what I believed was never what it was. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have got it validated out that I wasn't what I said I was. And so listen, I'm saying that to say to anybody watching and anybody look, don't let people dictate to you what and who you are. You got to know without a shadow of a doubt that if God be for you, he's more than this world against you. If he said, let it go, you got to leave. You got to cast all your cares upon him. You can't just give him the ones that, that, that you can handle or that you can't handle and you'll keep the ones you can handle. You got to give it all to him. Hey, man, I'm, listening. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen to me. First John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. To forgive us mm -hmm. our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. Any sin is unrighteous, yo. Mm -hmm. Any sin that you're holding in your life is unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. That's not them little ones that you can get that you can deal with that, that don't that don't really hurt nobody. It's this my life. I do what I want to. It ain't that ain't you gotta let it all go. And I know some people like to hold on to certain things. Listen, the Bible says it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's them little things, y'all, that we don't that we don't address that will kill the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Because Tanya and I, we're real big on, on relationships and marriages and stuff. And that's what we, we mentor people in, in marriages. We tell people all the time. If you don't continue, if you don't deal and continue to make the main thing in your conversations the main thing and deal with them right and deal with them now, they will have a way of building. And that fire becomes such, it starts out as a little em, as a little ember. It's, 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 it's just a little, it's just a little, 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 little thing that's burning. And then before you know, you got a full on blaze in your house. Where did that come from? You you did you close the door on it. You ain't pay no attention to it. It was you ain't smell that smoke in it the whole time. <laughs> the same with our lives. Mm -hmm. Same with our lives. We go things go on things go unchecked in our lives because daddy used to do it, mama used to do it, mm -hmm. auntie. We used to do it. We used to do it together, and we gotta learn. We gotta we gotta know. Listen, we got man. We can keep going on and on about the things we got to let go. Mm -hmm. There were so many things I had to let go when, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I came into the body of Christ. I was a whole monger. I had to let that go. Mm -hmm. 
Can y'all believe it? I used to lie. <laughs> I know I don't look like I used to lie. I used to lie. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will wake up lying. <laughs> somebody say, I used to lie too. Somebody say, Virgil, man, you wake up lying. Why you, why you wake up lying? Somebody asked you, what, 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 what the sky out there look like, man? It's raining, but uh, it's, 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 it's clear as all get out, man. It's raining outside, man. <laughs> Just stupid stuff. Lie for no reason. And then how that thing, how that spirit that gets onto you and, 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 and grips you that you got to let it go, that you know you got to stop lying when you start convincing yourself of the lie you told. And you know it's a lie. You look yourself in the, in the mirror and be like, I believe that. Man, that, that made that whole story up. <laughs> that's how deceptive our, that's how deceptive things can become if we if they go unchecked. And I'm giving y'all a whole lot on tonight, but we got to let it go. Go ahead. No, I just, I, you know, you will pray then. Absolutely. I, I, I just hear well, some you can stuff that, um, that needs to, <laughs> Billy Jane cracking up. Absolutely. Because, and one thing that does when unforgiveness festers, like I just hear unfamiliar, I mean, not unfamiliar, excuse me, familiar spirits, because that thing is designed, like Pastor B was saying, when you can't let that stuff go, is designed to keep haunting you. Mm -hmm. So unforget, and I said haunting because y'all already know, all right? So when that unforgiveness, when you keep holding on to it, it it's, it's tormenting you. And the Lord never wanted us to be tormented. He never wanted us, that's why he came. He came to set the captives free. So if you're captive to, yes, Lord, if you're captive to unforgiveness, God is saying, I want to set you free. Yeah, for sure. I don't want you bound by unforgiveness. He's mm -hmm. saying there are many that are in the grave because of unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. For sure. Couldn't let it go. Could not let her it go. God with bitterness yeah. and ill will towards so someone, many people. Someone or somebody or somebody's. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. Couldn't let it go. Yeah. Wouldn't let it go. Yeah. They said, I would rather die than let it go. Yeah, people have said that. And so they died, holding on to it. Yeah. And what a terrible way to go. What a way, what a terrible way to die with unforgiveness in your heart, man. Mm. Un Jesus. Unforgiveness, bitterness, strife. Let it not be said among us. Yeah, we, we, we got to let it go, y'all. Amen. We got, last scripture, Colossians 3.13. It says, bearing with one, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. We got to bear with each other. In love, one scripture said, forgiving each other. We got to let it go, man. Mm -hmm. It's important. It's not, and, it's, and listen, a lot of people say it's not for the individual that you're doing it for, but it's for you. We're talking about you. We're not talking about the individual. We're talking about us as individuals. We got to let that stuff go, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, we not, we not cool no more. I'm good with that. We'll probably never be, we'll probably never be as close as we once were, but I'm good with that. I, I let it go though. And so we gotta be, we gotta be forgiven, y'all. We gotta, and we gotta be free to let, let God let it go. Help us let it, help us to let it go. Somebody write in the chat, somebody write in the chat, God, help us to let it go. Help us to free ourselves from it, God. I want to experience all of you, so help me to let it go. I need your help to let it go. <clears throat> In Romans 5, 5, it says, and hope does not, hold on, let me pull it up. And hope maketh us not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Amen. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Yeah. Amen. 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 We're going, let's go to the prayer. Let's pray. All right. So, Father, we just thank you on tonight. Father, we thank you for walls coming down. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Walls from years and years of 
degradation and despair, God. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is piercing our Amen. hearts on tonight. Yes, Lord. As it divides soul and asunder, God, touch us. Hallelujah. Give us hearts of flesh again. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Creating us a clean heart yes. and renew a right spirit within us, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 So that we may see your face and your hand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And no matter what the enemy has come, hallelujah, to deter us, to try to destroy us, to try to get us off, God, we cancel every assignment right yes. now of the enemy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And of unforgiveness. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, Lord God, for letting us see things now through a new perspective, fresh hallelujah. perspective on yeah. tonight, to see things through the eyes of God. Yes, Amen. Lord. That we may see things through the eyes of God, that we may see people through the eyes of God. Hallelujah. And not through our own lens, God. Hallelujah. May the scales fall off of our eyes on tonight. Yes, Lord. Shut up by it. Hallelujah. And may the walls come down from our hearts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As you pierce it with your love on tonight, God. Hallelujah. Because there's no shadow, no turning that you won't find us, God. So thank you for finding us even in the state we're in. Yes, yes. Lord. Hallelujah. And thank you for putting us back on the potter's wheel. Yes, Lord. And making us over again on tonight. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Make us over on tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So that you may be pleased with us, Father. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He said Hallelujah. he's always perfecting those things Hallelujah. that concern us. Hallelujah. And as she was saying, God, and I put that into what God was saying, he's giving you guys and us spiritual 2020 vision mm -hmm. to see things. Mm -hmm again see things differently Hallelujah. and listen if you guys are tuning in with us via youtube listen if you are enjoying the word shoot us a line at the, the kingdom advancing ministry let us know that you guys are tapping into tuning into us if you need a ministry Hallelujah. to become a part of consider partnering with the, the kingdom advancing ministries listen we love you with the love of the lord thank you guys for tuning in with us every wednesday we appreciate you guys um have a blessed blessed rest of your weekend we love you guys with the love of the lord and we'll see you next week.